Hello happy people, my name is Dan and today I'm going to be showing you how to create in GML on GameMaker a very simple countdown timer which, when finished, should look something like this. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is create a new object and that is going to be the object which our timer will run, will run from. Um, so we're just going to call this O Timer. O Timer. Um, and with this one we're going to set everything up in the create event and what we're going to do is set up the local variables so these are going to be what actually stores the uh, amounts for each of the timers minutes, seconds and tenths of seconds so I'm calling these t min, t sec and t mil I don't really know why I went with mil you can name them whatever you like as long as you remember what they are um, and then what we're going to do is set up the alarm. Now I know some people would rather use timers um, rather than alarms, but I think alarms tend to be the sort of common go-to. Uh, we can also set up the actual starting of the timer in different areas, such as we could do it on uh, a space key uh, keyboard press, or we can do it uh, at a certain point. It doesn't really matter, but I'm setting it up in the create event. You can trigger it wherever you like. So, uh, like I said here in the comments, we're putting it in the create. Uh, what we're doing here is we're setting up the alarm. The alarm can be FPS if you wish, uh, frames per second. Most, uh, well, by default, the game maker will, uh, game maker games will run at 60 FPS unless you change it to something else. Uh, we're dividing it by 10 though because we're doing it for a tenth of a second. Um, but in this case, we're just going to set it to well, 60 frames per second divided by 10. That is going to be six. So we're setting the alarm to run every six frames. Um, you can also change this if you want the timer to run faster or slower if you're not doing it by seconds or by tenths of seconds but that's what we're doing uh, and then we go into the alarm event and this is where the actual timer tick is going to happen so we've got the variables here the first thing we're going to do is take the tenth of a second variable and minus one um, what we need to do then is if that uh, tenth of a second equals minus one we're going to reset it so we're going to put that to nine uh, because it's a tenth of a second and then we're going to run the seconds down by one now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to do the same thing with seconds so if the seconds actually uh, equal minus one then oh, uh, <laughs> I've done a little bit of a typo there so if the seconds hit minus one same with the milliseconds we're going to take the minute variable and reduce it by one but first things first we're going to reset the seconds to 59 not 29 uh, 59 because there are 60 seconds so it'll hit to minus 1 it will go to 59 again and then we'll take the minute counter down so these are going to reduce the seconds by 1 and reduce the minutes by 1 um, what it's going to do then is it's going to reset the uh, alarm itself so resetting the alarm will ensure that it runs every tenth of a second unless the timer is at 0 because we don't want it to tick into minus numbers so the way we do that is um, as you'll see here, make sure the timer doesn't tick if it's at zero. We're going to first check the variables, so we're going to have a if not, so the exclamation mark is not. So if the seconds are not equal to zero, and the minutes are not equal to zero, and the tenth of a second variable is not equal to zero, so basically if the timer isn't zero, 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 then we're going to reset the alarm. And just as we did before, we're going to set it to six, because our game runs at 60 frames per second, and it's one tenth of a second. To run the timer down. The next step is uh, what to do if the timer is at zero. Now this is if you want to have any sort of action like, uh, in this case we're just going to end the game, um, but you may want to move to the next room, you may want to do something else, whatever it may be. So we're just going to add an else statement on the end, so if the timer is at zero, and here we're going to put game end. So as you can see there, that is everything that's involved in actually making the timer tick down. First the milliseconds, well not milliseconds, tenth of a seconds, then the seconds, then the minutes. Uh, and these were all set up here in the create event. So what we're going to do now is actually draw the timer. So drawing the timer on screen is probably the most important part of it. Uh, and with this we're going to create a, uh, well we're going to put a nice font in. I would generally go for a font where all the letters are the same spaced apart so it doesn't look like it's going back and forth when the timer ticks. I'm going to use a font called Alma Mono Bold. It doesn't really matter which font you use, but that's just something to make it a bit more visible for us. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the actual colour 
Um, so the first thing we're going to do is draw set colour. Uh, I have spelt colour with a U because I'm a uh, filthy Brit. <laughs> it doesn't matter which way you do it. Thankfully Game Maker recognises both spellings. Then we're going to set the font, which we've named F Timer. And then we're going to set... Now we can set the H Align and V Align. So that means it's going to be aligned to the top left. If you want it to align to the middle, you can draw uh, you can draw set H align as F A center, um, and same with a V align. You can do middle or bottom. It doesn't matter. Uh, that is optional. It depends on what other draw events you've had. Because uh, if you don't reset it, then it will take on the properties of the last thing you've done in a, done in a different draw event. Next to that, we're actually before we get to drawing the timer, we're going to set up a, a variable. So the variable we're using here is t. Now this is exclusive to the draw event and it is a string. As you can see I've set it there with two uh, quotation marks. And we're going to add each part of the timer to this t variable. So the first thing is the string of the minutes, so t min. Then we're going to add the uh, colon there. Then we're going to... That is an unfortunate typo, please ignore that. <laughs> then we are going to add the seconds. So. Um, if the seconds are above 9, so we want the seconds to have the 0 as well, so it doesn't just so like, if it's less than 10 seconds, we don't want it to just have the seconds, we want it to have a 0 in front. Um, but I've done that the wrong way around, as you'll see in a second, I do go to correct that. So um, we're going to duplicate that line with Control D, very useful keyboard function. Uh, so here we go, if the seconds are above uh, 9, we're not going to add anything, just the seconds. If they are below 10, we're going to add the 0 in front. That will be the next step. And then of course on the end we need the uh, tenth of a second variable. So first we're going to add um, t plus uh, a dot to separate it. And then we're going to add the tenth of a second which is t underscore mil. So that combined is going to be our timer string. That's going to contain all of the details of that timer that we've just set in the alarm and the create event. And now it's just a case of drawing the variable t. So draw text, we're just going to put it in the top left corner, so 5, 5. You can put it wherever you like, and then t being the variable that we've just set up. So that should be everything we need. And what we're going to do now is, so that there is our t variable. What we're going to do now is place the timer object into our room. It's very simple, you should know how to do that. We just place that in the corner there, and then we'll run it to make sure it works. So as you can see, there we go, the timer is running. Nice and simple. Um, I'm going to make that font a little bit bigger, just so it's a bit easier to see uh, for you guys. Play around with it, uh, you know, there's different variable, uh, different font choices, that doesn't really matter. But here we go, you can see there, the timer is running down for tenths of a second every six frames, which equates to one second for the second variable. Uh, if we put this to a lower value, so if we put it to 10, 1 minute 10 there, uh, you can see as well where you get the 0 in front. So you see you've got 0, 9, 0, 8, 0, 7, and so on. Um, then that'll actually tick down. You can see what happens as well when the minutes go down. So when it goes to 0, there you go, the minutes have gone down as well. If we want to create a little sense of urgency, perhaps, what we can do, just a little optional extra, uh, we can check if, for example, the minutes are below 1. So if it's on that last minute, we can set uh, the colour to red. Now, if you do that, that's going to mean it's white by default, and then it'll turn red in the last minute. Again, play around with this, there's different options you can do, but as you can see, as that ticks down, we're going to get a little bit more of a sense of urgency. Oh no, it's on the last minute. So when it's on one minute, there we go, look at that. Suddenly it's very urgent. Um, what we're going to do, uh, just to make sure, as I've shown you earlier, when the game ends at zero, so we're going to set it to 10 seconds now. Um, when that runs to zero, you'll see that the game ends, which uh, will be three, two, one, end. Simple. Um, what we can do is uh, anything else here, when the timer ends we can add other things like go to the next room, but I'm just going to remove that for now just to show you that when it does hit zero, the timer doesn't progress any further. So when that hits zero, it will just stay at zero. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Um, and I hope you have fun implementing the timers in your games. It's just a very simple tutorial, but I've remade this because my last one was made a few years back, so I've just... 
done it again now for the latest version of Game Maker, but this will still be applicable in any other version of Game Maker as far as I'm aware, unless uh, in the future they make all of that redundant, but I can't imagine they would. So uh, I hope that is useful to you, and until next time, bye!